The Boocast synth of the month is... The Bass Station 2. Released in 1993, the original Bass Station was an analogue monosynth whose guts were designed by the great Chris Huggett. And its VCA and filter were lifted directly from his legendary synth, the Wasp. Sometime in the mid-90s, I was playing a Juno 6 and an SH-1 in a band. That's me. Between songs, the lead singer had to tell jokes to the audience while I set the sounds for the next song with the rest of the band glaring at me. When I saw a bass station secondhand, I exclaimed, it's got presets, that'll save some time on stage. So I bought it and I used it at home, triggered by a 626 drum machine. It was a lot easier to program than my 202, but I didn't really connect with it. It didn't sound like the SH-1, and I wasn't interested in acid squelches, and I thought the square sounded funny, so I sold it, and I left the band. When the Bass Station 2 came out in 2013, I again cried, Great! It's got memories! We can use it live! And so begins my terrible confession to novation. So you'll have all seen this or you have it or you've seen all the other videos or something like that. So I'm going to be really quick here. Um, so it's got two oscillators, which has sine. Can that possibly be? Oh. And there's the first problem. <laughs> so just sine, coarse tuning, plus and minus an octave, fine tuning. Modulation envelope depth. Whoa. Whoa. Yep. LFO one depth. And pulse width modulation depth via LFO two. Okay, so the two oscillators are accessed via the same five knobs and two switches, uh, four switches, um, and you choose between oscillator one and two with this. And you continually, promise you, <laughs> uh, edit the wrong oscillator. But hey, that's great. There's so space. That's nice. Um, there's also a sub oscillator. Minus one or minus two octaves with a sine, a pulse, or a square. Oscillator 2 is the same. Let's just go to that. So you switch it over. And in the mixer, we choose between oscillator 1 and 2 and the sub. We also have external in via this switch and this knob ring modulation between the two oscillators with this switch and this knob and noise in there so again a multitasking knob here and then we've got a filter we've got two different models so we've got the classic filter which i believe is based on the original base station which therefore in theory is based on the original wasp <laughs> We got choice of slopes, we can go from 12 dB to 24 dB. And you get a low pass, which you've just heard, band pass. And the modulation envelope depth. And LFO two depth. We've also got an overdrive into the filter knob here. We can, t we can turn up the amount of drive into the filter. So a high pass.
There's also an acid model of filter, which actually let's go to a single saw. Check they're all off. Yep, you see there was some ring mods there. You don't notice you've turned it on until you flick the switch. Okay, well, so with the drive, it slightly kills the resonance. Yeah, uh, so you can see what the acid filter is trying to sound like. I kind of prefer the classic. Very rarely use it, so there's no real, no real resonance. Well, there is. Actually, it's nice, isn't it? Very different to the first filter, though, and the good thing is that they're different. They sound different. Okay, the envelopes. So we've got two envelopes, but they're, again, controlled by one set of envelope sliders. Attack, decay, sustain, release. Um, you've got uh, the amp envelope. Behaves as it should. The mod envelope, which is accessed via the mod envelope depth. We can control the filter with it, for example. We've got an effects section over here, which has distortion. Uh, really does beef it up quite a lot. go um and also oscillator filter mod which takes the frequency of oscillator 2 or the waveform and the frequency of oscillator 2 and os and modulates the filter with it two delightful craft worky in effect that's enough uh, portamento or glide. <laughs> LFOs. We've got two LFOs. LFO one is uh, linked to the pitch of the oscillators and it can be triggered by key sync. Yeah, so every time you hit a key, it starts the cycle of the LFO. You can also, well, you can control the speed. Again, another switch, two knobs, four functions. So LFO one depth goes positive and negative. Both the LFOs have the same waveforms and the same features, so we can have a speed control and a delay control, which um, adjusts the time it takes for it to come in. In fact, let's do that on there. Just fades in the effect of the LFO. Okay, and LFO two can control the pulse width of the square wave. And it can also control the modulation of the filter. Ah, there we go. I'm still on delay, so flick it back to speed. There you go. Okay, um, I hope this is showing you that actually, even though I've had this synth for 10 years nearly, uh, this is, uh, I still get mixed up with these switches, so you, f you, you forget what you're doing. It's not a big problem, but it's, sometimes it's like, ah, what have I done? Uh, oh, that's what I've done. That kind of thing happens all the time, but it's great because it's so small. Um, I guess if they didn't have these switches, you'd have two of those, you'd have two more of those, you'd have two of those. Hey, you'd get a bigger keyboard as well, wouldn't you? Oh, well, never mind. Okay, it also has uh, an arpeggiator, so let's turn it on. Match that. So the arpeggio has uh, 32 inbuilt patterns, which is a bit sort of reminiscent of the patternator on the fuse box, so all the way there. So that kind of halves the tempo at one. 
and I think it slowly adds. No, they're shorter. So it's got these little variations on on what you put in. And gradually getting faster up to 32. Yeah, it also has a sequencer. There are four slots for sequences. The slots will be attached to your presets, but there are only four of them. There's a problem, you see. So if if they had a sequence per preset, then you wouldn't run into this problem. So often I'll have a sequence running on one preset and then I'll make another sound, need another sequence, forget which one of these slots I'm in, overwrite it, and then you go back and realize, ah, I've, I've just wiped the previous one because I forgot. So a bit of a limitation, uh, these four, but hey, it's there, which is great. And at the time, as I said, wow, I was so excited. It's got presets, like, yay. So yeah, it's got all of that. And as well as all that, it's got these tiny little bits of writing here, which you can see and you probably know. These can be accessed via uh, the function key. So you can filter frequency on the mod wheel, adjusting what the aftertouch is doing. It does have an aftertouch after keyboard and it's quite good. Uh, adjusting the key sync on or off of the LFO1, the slew of the LFO1 or 2, so it's great. You can apply slew to the um, LFOs. So, for example, if you have a triangle wave, it can smooth off the edges of it in sort of ARP style. And then there's the square wave, which also you can round off the edges of that. So that's a nice feature. Oscillator 1 and 2 sync, so we can sync these oscillators. So let's just do that. <laughs> So yeah, we got velocity to the modulation envelope depth, which is great. Modulation to the amp envelope depth, which is great. Um, so it works with this, got velocity. A limiter on the VCA, never used it. Swing on the arpeggio, never used it. Sequence re-trigger, like to disable it because it shortens the sequence for some reason. MIDI channel, local tune, input gain, and dump. There you go. So on the face of it, it's a brilliant synth. And yes, it fit the bill. It was exactly what we needed. And I oh, snapped it up. And it's been at every single show. So there's nothing wrong with it, is there? So it's already a great synth and does a lot of things that a lot of the other synths do. I use it, in fact, live to basically impersonate the Dominion. OS filter mod is very Dominion-y and the re-triggering of the envelopes, etc. Then they came out with various updates. And so the first update was this one. And this is where the manual comes out because you forget, don't you? So for adjustable filter tracking, manual's telling me, press and hold the function key. So you press and hold the function key and press the filter frequency key twice. So by default, the keyboard is tracked to the filter cutoff. Useful. Because you can play the filter. You can adjust this by going up to maximum of seven, which is no tracking. So you can adjust the amount of tracking. That's useful. The most amazing thing, really, is paraphonic mode. In fact, I'm going to cut between... <laughs> that was the first update. This is the second update. I'm going to go between both of them. So let's put it into paraphonic mode. So here we've got... It's a mono synth, right? Okay, so you press the function key and press oscillator 1, 2, sync twice. Turn it on. We've got a paraphonic, sorry Mark Doty, I hope that's right. Obviously in addition we've got ring mods, so let's turn the ring modulator up and turn those down. We've got those slightly ARP Odyssey type sounds. Staying in this mode we've also got oscillator error which can be added and we do that by pressing function and pressing oscillator pitch bend range twice. So we can turn the error from 
clean. Slightly wonky. Getting more and more wonky until that broken synth type things. It's around here. Each time you hit the key, there's a separate random tuning for both of the oscillators, giving it that slightly, you know, vintagey type of feel. Okay, so there's a whole bunch of micro tuning support as well, which uh, it was a bunch of preset micro tunings. I think there's eight of them. Wendy Carlos's super 12 note per octave just intonation scale. Yeah. give a very particular flavour, don't they? I know a certain fellow that we're about to come on to in a second uses lots of interesting tunings. Anyway, so another update in the first update is envelope re-triggering. So we can re-trigger the mod envelope and the amp envelope independently. We press function, amp envelope twice, re-trigger, on. and it re-triggers once the decay portion is gone. I'll do it for the mod envelope as well, so... You can get interesting, interesting little rhythmic things. No sequencer, no LFO is being used, it's just the envelopes re-triggering. So this is one of the things I do on the Dominion. Because of its re-triggering LFOs, but here we're not even using LFOs, we're using re-triggered envelopes. None of my synths have envelope re-trigger on them, this is the only one after this update. Oh, that's a lie. The micro freak has it. They've got two independently here. Bit of Doctor Who. Going back to an, an init patch here for the next thing, which is glide divergence. To activate glide diversions, we press and hold function and press the input gain key twice. What this does is it, it splits the two oscillators into two different speeds. It puts a, a distance between them and the number is the amount of distance. So, so with glide time down to zero, you can just hear that slight difference there. As one of the oscillators sort of catches up to the frequency. So that reminds me of the Tysco because the two oscillators being in duophonic mode, one of them's always a little bit late catching up because of the two rails inside. But yeah, so if we put it up to... To there, and then we'll bring up the glide time. I think that sounds great. It's got a real the synth that does glide divergence like that between the two oscillators. Possibly the most interesting thing is uh, the AFX mode. Now, even in the very first review I saw of the Base Station 2, which was with Nick Bat on Sonic State, he commented on how quickly this thing changes its presets. So, I mean, it's instantaneous. 
Mm. And um, I believe people have been using Electron stuff to re-trigger it and send program changes to create effects where you've got different sounds happening all the time. Um, and there's, you know, there's, there is some uh, question about who actually invented this or discovered this or suggested this. <laughs> Let's not get into any of that. But um, yeah, so AFX mode, as it was called, after Mr. Rich James, is actually quite unique. I think there may be one other synth on the market that does something like this, but only one. So what FX mode gives you is an, a thing called an overlay. So in the central two octaves of the keyboard, each of these keys has a separate sound. And it's, you know, that's pretty amazing, right? And then when you put a sequence in, While you're doing this, you can also adjust the knobs on the front of the synth. And it will, it sort of sticks. As the sequence triggers a key, if it notices you turning something as it's being triggered, it sticks to that. So it's not quite parameter lock or anything like that, but it, it's quite interesting. So as well as all that, so with the poly mode, there's something else you can do. I'll just get it to an initialized patch again. So we've got oscillator one, oscillator two, sub oscillator. The sub oscillator is tied to oscillator one, right? No. You press function and turn the course tuning. You can disconnect the sub oscillator from oscillator one. So you've got three independently tunable oscillators here. And get some quite nice sounds on it. So I asked the question, can your analog monosynth do any of that? Can it do some of that? I bet it can't do all of that. It does so much. And, you know, our live setup, the Base Station 2 is the only analog thing we really have on stage, apart from the CS1. So it has to do a lot of heavy lifting. I hardly ever use the updates. I mean, I just use it as a monster bass machine. So this is the substance of my confession. Am, am I treating this thing like a workhorse rather than a racehorse? It's, it, it's got so many things in it that so many of my other synths don't have. And yet I tend to use it just to fake the Moog bass sounds, the ARP sounds, the Dominion noises. And no, it does it really well. And when it's going through a PA, it sounds huge. I mean, it's massively huge sounding properly treated through a PA, you can really shake the room with it. And that's what I love it for. But I serious, secretly think that the reason I'm really using it is because it's low price and it's light. It weighs nothing and it's very small and it's easy to carry around. And that's a little bit of a, you know, little bit of a cheap reason to use something isn't it it's not, it's, I'm not using it for any of its good things I hardly ever as I said I hardly ever use the updates so if, the, if I took the Dominion to a gig for example and it went missing for whatever reason I wouldn't be able to replace it right now they've just vanished off the face of the earth if I lost this I, I could replace it the very next day so my really deep question is am I taking this little synth for granted Am I really, really not treating it with the love and respect it deserves? Because it's plastic. And because it's basically a base station. Just like my first one. Oh dear. Forgive me, Novation. I have sinned.